Well, good morning on my uh, part of the world. It may be good afternoon on other people's part of the world. So I'd like to uh, get started with my discussion here. I'm going to talk about uh, the concept and I'm sharing my screen. I have, um, uh, they told me I had five hours to talk. And, and uh, so I have a couple of thousand slides to go through with you. Um, just kidding, of course. What, what I want to do is share with you the concept of um, treating the acutely ill patient. Um, my my um, journey with plant-based nutrition started um, over 17 years ago, and I was a busy uh, cardiologist practicing in the world's largest medical center as a cardiologist and cardiac electrophysiologist. And so I was treating some of the sickest people around. And uh, my personal experience with uh, nutritional uh, intervention was with myself with uh, nutritional juice feast and raw foods. And I started applying this to patients. Uh, so my initial application of plant-based nutrition was applying it to acutely ill patients. And so as I went through my journey, we created a process of applying this in the acute setting. So what I want to do is share with you uh, uh, information that we have, but this is an accumulation of, of nearly two decades of our experience and our data gathering. And we have some scientific data that we published uh, in the medical literature showing this approach. So uh, how do you apply uh, uh, the food prescription or plant-based nutrition in the acute uh, patient setting? Um, first of all, let's talk about what acute and chronic illness is. So I'd like to kind of share with the audience, for those who are not medical professionals, what is a chronic disease? Uh, it's simply an illness that is an adverse health condition. Uh, we know many of them, heart disease and, and the like, but it's one that's expected to last more than a year. So it's not necessarily a common cold or the sniffles that you may get uh, or a bump or a bruise that may heal or a short period of time, but it's an illness or an adverse condition that lasts for more than a year. We're familiar with uh, many of them. Uh, there's heart disease, cancer, diabetes, uh, chronic lung disease, arthritis, uh, you, uh, many of you know individuals have loved ones who suffer from these illnesses. So with a chronic illness, then what is an acute illness? Okay, we talk about acute versus chronic. Uh, an acute versus chronic illness, a chronic illness, as I said, a condition that's expected to last more than a year. An acute illness occurs suddenly, and it lasts from the order of hours to weeks, uh, sometimes a little bit longer than weeks, uh, but typically a sudden onset of an acute illness. Um, uh, it uh, occurs suddenly and, and lasts for hours to weeks. Uh, in essence, acute illnesses are frequently seen as exacerbations of chronic illnesses. And so uh, I like to think of them as flare-ups. Um, if you have uh, heart disease, you may be living with heart disease and all of a sudden you have a flare-up of your heart condition. Uh, it could be in the form of decompensated heart failure. It can be in the form of a heart attack itself, but it's a flare-up of a chronic condition. So I like to use this analogy when explaining acute illnesses. And, uh, you know, we're here in Texas, and, you know, this is one of the barbecue capitals of the world. And so people know about uh, uh, coals. So typically when you light up your, your coals, you get them hot and they're smoldering. Uh, so smoldering coals are akin to a chronic illness. It's a smoldering. The fire is like a chronic inflammatory condition or increased oxidative state. So the smoldering condition uh, uh, goes on for a while and then something happens to cause a flame to come up. So the, inflame, the, the smoldering coals become inflamed. That's analogous to an acute illness. So it's a, the chronic illness flares up uh, and it becomes acute. And so then you have to ramp up your uh, treatment and intervention to put this fire out, uh, bring things under control. So if you were to summarize things, in essence, an acute illnesses are essentially chronic illnesses in rapid progression. And that's where I like to think of acute illness. So if you have a uh, heart condition, underlying coronary disease, you know, and if you're not treating it or not trying to reverse it, then you're kind of on a slow decline uh, in terms of your disease progression but something can come along and trigger that uh, uh, condition. Maybe you can get an infection or you can you know, have a, a bad meal of some type and it cause a trigger to where you go from a slow decline to a more rapid decline on a slippery slope. 
And that could be in the form of a heart attack or acute coronary syndrome, as we talk about, or it could become in the form of a decompensated heart failure. Or if it's lung disease, you can have decompensated chronic obstructive lung disease. So these acute illnesses are rapid progression of chronic illnesses. So what I'd like to do is I'd like for us, when we talk about treating the acute illness, I want us to think about these chronic illnesses and acute illnesses sort of as a continuum. And, and as we go through this process, uh, let's use that concept and that construct uh, in our thought process. So what is the underlying process uh, of chronic and acute illnesses? Uh, I alluded to them early on. One major component is inflammation. I like to uh, uh, think of inflammation, inflammation as a biochemical fire. Uh, it's an ongoing process. Uh, your immune system is revved up and kept revved up by some kind of a stimuli. In most cases, and we'll talk about this, is the food that we're consuming. These foods have foreign agents in them, uh, processed chemicals, uh, 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 processed fats and the like, and it's constantly triggering our immune system to uh, 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 rev up our, our inflammatory cells and it maintains a smoldering fire. So this chronic inflammation, as we see it could you know, trigger cancer or pulmonary disease or, or other metabolic disorders, but it's an ongoing smoldering fire of these coals uh, and we have symptoms that are ongoing, chronic back pain or shortness of breath or swelling and these types of things, are all chronic ailments that are signs of this ongoing inflammatory process. A ma another major driving component is oxidative stress. Uh, I like to think of oxidative stress as a toxic chemical buildup. Again, uh, one of the, the main things are the foods we consume, but you know, you can bring an oxidative stress by uh, increased EMF, you know, the last uh, speaker talked about, you know, that concept, uh, the lack of fresh air and sunshine, uh, you know, say, staying indoors, you know, breathing in uh, recycled air. Again, you know, these are toxic chemicals that get into our system. Uh, they trigger chemical uh, uh, buildup. In essence, you know, oxidative stress is a buildup of excess free radicals. Uh, these are um, electron poor molecules and uh, they can be stabilized, they're unstable in their free radical state, uh, and this is how they cause damage. Uh, so this increased oxidative stress is an excess amount of free radicals that are causing chronic damage. You can see here an, an, an um, apple undergoes oxidation, uh, analogous to a normal cell that becomes, uh, undergoes oxidation, becomes abnormal and, and dysfunctional, and eventually uh, uh, suffers its demise. A third component I like to talk about in brief is dysbiosis. Our microbiome is so important to our overall health. And the, uh, the, the organisms that live around us are very important and they actually outnumber our inherent cells. So an abnormal microbiome contributes to, again, our underlying chronic disease state. And so I like to think of these three components as underlying uh, legs, if you will, holding up your disease state, holding up your heart failure, your chronic illness. So when we talk about reversing a disease, we want to look at the core issue of why we have these chronic diseases. And these are three major pillars of that underlying core, uh, those core components of uh, chronic disease.